and welcome. The Rap Show is back at the Summer House studio. It's day two of Royal Ascot and you're sitting front row with us, your co-hosts, Scott and Louise. This is an opportunity to have a slightly different Ascot experience. Yes. Steeped in history. The artistry that's involved, so every day is unique. Oh my goodness. I couldn't believe it was actually real. Of course I had to do a royal purple. Oh, Top class stuff, it doesn't get any better. The sun is shining. Today's the day for it. We've got some very good horses lining up. Of course it is all about the fashion, sorry, it is all about the racing. He's absolutely relentless, they race up towards the line and he's going to fend them all off. <laughs> we certainly kicked off day one in style, but here on day two, the stakes are high, the anticipation is palpable, and the atmosphere is simply electric. From the thundering hooves to the roaring applause, it's not just the fashion giving us a feast for the senses. And yet the fashion is truly quite remarkable. Day two already is quite the tapestry of modern sophistication, don't you think, Louise? I mean, what are you seeing more of today? Well, the bigger the hats. I think they're even bigger today, but I'm very excited to see, and we don't know yet, who is going to be uh, in the royal procession. Yes. I cannot wait. Very exciting, very exciting. Well, it's going to be hard to beat yesterday, but we love a fashion challenge here at The Rap Show. We do. And don't forget, we want you to be part of the show by letting us know your highlights of the day by tagging hashtag Mow It Moments. Speaking of challenges, yesterday we asked you to vote for where you'd like us to take you today, right? The Car Park One Fortnum and Mason's Picnic or the Magnum Dipping Bar. Stay right there, guys. I'm going to go and find out. <laughs> Picnics and Magnum Bars, you don't need to tell me twice. See you later. Hello, it's Nana here and it is day two at Royal Ascot and today I'm in the Windsor enclosure. I cannot wait to see what the fashion holds today. Please, can you talk me through everything from your hat to your dress to your shoes, all of it? My yeah. hat is slightly stolen okay. from my mother. My mother is a hat goddess. This dress is Rotate by Berger Christensen. Yeah. Where's the hat from? His mum's wardrobe, I'm not oh. sure. I just borrowed it for the day. just spotted someone over here, so I'm going to go and speak to her about her outfit. So the hat is surprisingly actually homemade. Oh, wow, I, I love that. I am a creative soul. So listen, let's have a little chat about, sort of obviously we've got the fashion, but I really want to speak to you guys about the food. Obviously you, Alexandra, being a wonderful food writer with many, you. many accolades. I took you first. I know, exactly. Let's do that. We'll do that after this. Um, and lovely Sarah, podcast giant with Live Well, Be Well and all of the nutritional advice you give us. So obviously um, if you're prepping for Royal Ascot, what sort of things should we think about with that sort of day ahead where you've got to really be very careful and wise about what you're eating first thing in the, in the day? I'm a smoothie girl for things like this, but I'm, I mean, it'd be Sarah would be the one to tell you about why you want to have something like that. So okay. I might like, pack it in, pack in the veg, pack in a bit of protein, frozen banana in there, nice and easy to digest. What, why frozen banana? Because it makes it creamy. Oh, yeah. okay, see, top, top tips, tips, top tips. Top tips. Okay, now, and then and then why about, is it important for men? This is the boring part. Yeah. Um, no, so it's really It could never be boring <laughs> with you. <laughs> you don't want to turn up exhausted, plus start drinking, and then you kind of overeat. Yes. So what you want to do is have that constant steady flow of energy so having something like I love two boiled eggs in the morning or some porridge or at, when it's a bit hot more kind of yogurt lots of Greek yogurt loads of protein berries a little bit of music but just something kind yes. of steady your blood sugar so you don't get here and get really excited by everything that's happening do you talk about have all of this on your drink. podcast as well all of this is on the podcast live well be well I need this advice <laughs> in my life thank you I'm gonna have loads of energy and tomorrow I will have the two boiled eggs and, and the smoothie yeah, you will. and some water and some water <laughs> Time for a sugar hit. We are at Sandringham Restaurant with Chef Oli Dubu. How are you doing, Oli? Really good, thanks. Good. Me too, because I'm. Can I give you this? Of course, I'm you can. I'm about to try. Yeah. Tell, tell Get stuck in. So it? you are about to try a, uh, a meal for you of pistachio, dark chocolate, and fragrant herbs. So modern take on a classic. Uh, so rather than puff pastry, we use 
patter bricks a lot lighter and you've got some basil, some marigold just punching through the pistachio and the chocolate. Oh, it's absolutely staggeringly brilliant. You, you can come back. You can come Thank back. you so much. I mean, I think from your sort of DNA and your offering, you know, mm. it's all the paired back, fine dining and, and all everything being organic. Just talk to us a little bit about the experience for people having the sandwich because I understand that rather than having this long sitting you have this chef station so it's quite a different experience yeah we're just deformalizing without sacrificing any of the quality so something for everyone we've got an a la carte menu with more progressive dishes we've also got these chef stations so we've got a, a carvery a sort of cold salad sort of buffet section here dessert section where so people you can, can place your bed pick up exactly you can graze all day and just because it's a bit less formal uh, doesn't mean there's any sacrifice to the finesse to the quality we have the same attention to detail uh, and also there's a hamon carving station which is amazing there's a gin cart out the front oh, so. hello hello <laughs> yeah. ollie thank you so much speaking of grazing all day <laughs> scott i'm off good luck thanks so much Cheers. Ollie. enjoy see you later ollie <laughs> They all look so amazing. I thought, let's get them all on camera. I've got Leonora, Zen, and Sabrina with me now. Ladies, welcome. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. How long did it take you all to get ready? Did you coordinate your looks? And can you tell me about each and every one of your looks? I think we'll all agree that Royal Ascot is one of the best weeks of the entire year. So in terms of sort of organising the outfits, it takes months. And then you were saying actually yours was last minute. I mean, you wouldn't know. <laughs> Polar opposite, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, no. Every time for Ascot, I'm always last minute, which is I shouldn't really say, but 5 p.m., is when I ordered the hat that arrived, <laughs> sorting wow. out everything this morning, which bags to go for, which shoes, even signing in my, I have another bag where I've got another bag and another pair of shoes. So. Just in case. Can just you just show us your, the chicest chewing gum holder I've yes. ever seen? Is it in there? So I work for a company called Halcyon Days and we have, we make beautiful pieces. It's this enamel box, which has my initials on it. And I've had it for almost 10 years. <laughs> But wow. it's really lovely, and yeah, I always carry that with me. So perfect for Ascot. And then Sabrina, you look like a vision. Tell, talk me through your look. So I was somewhere in between these guys, because I, I don't spend months, but I do like putting together a Pinterest board, like say two weeks before, and then I kind of like mishmash everything and then go and see if I can actually find it to you know piece it together in real life. But That is impressive. I love the gloves, very on trend at the moment. Jewelry on top. On that note, thank you very much, ladies. Have fun. Thank, thank you. you. We one. made it, we, we made did. it, and it's all thanks to you guys for bringing us here. I mean, we had the dipping of the chocolate option, but actually, I have to say, secretly very excited to we be here. We voted for this. So we've gate crashed, we found the most beautiful display. I know. Car what? boot, catering by the wonderful Pip and Seed. Yes, and delicious. And before everyone comes back for their tea, we're just in here, <laughs> I've got a Fortnum and Mason hamper. Scott's going to guess okay, what's in it. Okay, let me guess. So if I'm sort of typical car part one, I would probably start with some sort of potted shrimp. Close enough. We've got salmon. seafood sal seafood salad. Yes, bit of shrimp, yes, bit yes. of salmon. Yeah. That. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Brilliant. Um, and then maybe I'd go on to sort of egg and cress sandwiches. I'm going to give you that. So it's salmon. Yes, sandwiches. Oh no, there's well, yeah, and cucumber. A bit yeah. of cucumber, yeah. of course. Cucumber sandwich. Yeah. Uh, maybe a bit of roast beef and hollandaise. Yeah. Have you been peeking? No, no. I'm You've just a, you know, a regular here at Car Park <laughs> One. Um, maybe, maybe I'm just thinking maybe some sort of uh, cheese and biscuits. Right here. Gosh, you're a pro. We are making each other. You're a pro. Okay. Oh, um, I'm and show you. you know, we really do need to follow with some tea, don't we? We do. And. And some scones. Scones, tea, <laughs> this is delicious. your uncle. Thanks for voting. This is heaven. Thank you very much. Cheers. Chin chin. Yeah. 
Hello and welcome back and I'm very pleased to be joined by Justin Gardner who's the creator of the sculptural offering here at the Royal Enclosure. How are you Justin? I'm very good, having a lovely day. Oh it is super. I'm very very interested to hear the story here because I think you're in your eighth year at Royal Ascot. Yeah, but for eight years we've been uh, uh, presenting an exhibition of sculpture here and it's got bigger and better I think and, and I, I feel that Ascot are really um, taking a huge leap forward and, and, and wanting to increase the, the extra element well, of, of a they, day they, in the enclosure. Well, absolutely, and they really do add to that. I mean, they're yeah. such visual, beautiful pieces. So talk yeah. to me about the process, because obviously you're talking about these amazing pieces of wildlife yeah. and these incredible artists, and they're British. So how do you source all of that? We're very lucky. We work with about 40 different sculptors, all British sculptors, all cast here in the UK. So everything you see is, is British through and through. Right. And we feel that's quite important because this is the great British event. Absolutely. And we want to present the very best we can. And in the new year, um, we're asked to present a number of pieces. And, and uh, we, we present them to the committee. And they very kindly say yay or nay. Okay. And then we get to work. What a thrill! They must these this, these artists and sculptors must be thrilled to receive your phone call. I think they are. I think the guys. It's, it's a great accolade. You know, it, it is a thrill to be part of an event like this. So, talk to me about some of the wildlife that we've got here this year. Well, we've got this most magnificent monumental owl by Geoffrey Dashwood, mm. and that's two and a half meters high. We've got a two meter high horse head by um, Holly Hickmore. Um, beautiful, beautiful running boar by Hamish Mackey. So wow. these are all top names, all top names in the British sculpture world. And, and what sort of materials are they using to build their pieces of art? We always, we always offer bronze. So everything you see here is bronze, cast here in the UK. We have the most marvellous casting houses in the UK, probably the best in the world. And actually that helps the artists, helps the sculptors be more creative, push the boundaries a little bit. Yes. And I, I think sculpture and sculpture casting in the UK is really very healthy. We do yeah. lead the world. We, do we really? Yeah, very that much real so. craftsmanship? Very much so. Well, thank you. I mean, it's so interesting and they really do offer quite the backdrop for all of the imagery that we yeah. have in the Royal Enclosure. They're absolutely yeah. staggeringly beautiful. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. from the Windsor enclosure where I've been talking to all of the attendees today and I was so impressed with how much effort everyone had put into their looks. It was a little bit of a younger crowd but that doesn't mean they didn't look just as amazing. My favourite was the girl who had the Ganny dress on who had made her own hat and she, because she's here for four days she had lots of different looks that she was going to be going for um, and she just put so much thought into matching her blue hat with her blue dress. So yes, I cannot wait to see what happens tomorrow. See you then. I'm joined now by fashion designer Betty Bax. Betty, like a tall drink of water. I noticed you early this morning. Did you she? look so elegant. <laughs> I've noticed a few hats this year with um, detail underneath the brim. Ooh. Yes, this is a piece that I had the pleasure to co-design with Miss Beast Bill, uh, Millinery. Um, I just fell in love with this archive picture I've seen from Chanel that had all these flowers underneath. I thought that was so clever and I really wanted to have that vibe. Stunning. So is the dress. It's Wu Sang Chang a really dear friend of mine, 
so beautiful. I'm like, I'm in love with the black and white. It really, it's just so, so beautiful. I love the shape, absolutely exquisite. And then down to some very high platforms, if you can get a shot of the shoes. How are you doing in those today? They're so comfortable, actually. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a little twirl. And then a bag that doubles up as a weapon just in case anyone winds you up. <laughs> Who's your bag by? It's Cleo. It's just so amazing. I'm just like, I love it, but it doesn't really hold much. Well, it doesn't fit your betting card. <laughs> However, tried. it really, really. <laughs> now, have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Thank you. with a clear advantage, but here is Relief Rally and Tom Marquand is very tight. Villanova Queen and Colin Keane have got to the lead. They race towards the line. Villanova Queen, who don't tell Claire. Any one of this quartet could win. They race towards the line. Rogue Millennium nearest to us. The maroon jacket of Random Harvest. It is Rogue Millennium who wins. They've got 100 yards to cover, and it's Mostard Aff and Jim Crowley in front and running on strongly. Mostard Aff wins the Prince of Wales' stakes. So we're keeping very good company here uh, in the summer house with Nick Luck, our racing broadcaster. How have things been for you? Is it all sort of panned out exactly how you had expected? I don't think it's panned out as anyone has expected, <laughs> but that's what makes racing so glorious, the unscripted theatre. The big race today was the Prince of Wales' stakes. We were all talking about ADAR and Luxembourg and Baybridge and My Prosper and Mostadaf came scooting out of the clouds and swept past them all. Oh my goodness, looked a complete, unexpected. A complete revelation for a brilliant trainer, John Gosden and his son Thady, and a great jockey, Jim Crowley, who rode six winners here in Millennium Year. Really? And he still wasn't champion jockey because the Tadori did him on the, on the last day, but lovely to see him winning. So uh, I understand we had an American win today, mm -hmm. which what's the importance of like the international part of Royal Ascot? Become massively important since Wesley Ward, an American trainer, won in 2009. The floodgates opened. Americans love coming here. It's it really increased interest from overseas. I do a lot of broadcasting for NBC during the course of the week. Yep. Crimson Advocate was the name of the filly's name. She won by about that far for legendary American rider John Velasquez. And you just sense the whole place come alive a little bit. I mean, I guess for the sort of syndicates, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Well, I think today's a day where we've seen the democratization of ownership. Yes, we're used to the big potentates and the shakes and the royals having uh, good horses, but today we've had a first and second in the Royal Hunt Cup for Chelsea Thoroughbreds, which is a biggish syndicate, and then we've got a much bigger, bigger syndicate by volume of people, uh, the Rogues Gallery, they're called, who own Rogue Millennium, who Rogues Gallery. Yeah, who, who won the, uh, the Duke of Cambridge stakes. She was bought for 30,000, and she's now worth, I would put a conservative estimate, over 2 million. OK, so tomorrow, looking to that, Gold Cup Day, what should we be thinking about? Well, it used to be the day, as you know, of highest fashion, but now every day is, is highest <laughs> fashion. The Gold Cup, though, retains its place as the most historic and prestigious race of the week. It's two and a half miles, so it's one of the longest races of the week. Right. I think there's a great story here as well. A horse called Subjectivist, who won the race two years ago, got quite badly injured, is coming back off that. It would raise the roof if he were to win, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed for him. I'm keeping my fingers crossed too. Thank you so much, Nick. We'll Tom see you tomorrow. Scott, thanks so much. Thank you. Oh, I think it's time for some bubbles, don't you? Oh, that Moet it's moment. Our, it's our Moet moment. Yes. We are with Moet's global ambassador, Ethan Barrowian. Welcome, Ethan. Thank you very much. Lovely you, to be here. You are going to do the honours with this magnum. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Uh, we have actually obviously been celebrating our hashtag Moet moments every single day. So, Ethan, what's been your Moet moment thus far? Do you know, for me, it was getting here a little bit early um, and watching everyone come through the gates. Yes. There's something to be said about when everyone looks their best. Yes. They've just got out of their taxis, they've just come from the station, everything Whoa, is in perfect. Oh, oh, that was really cleverly I mean, ask finessed. an expert to do something. I thought I was a bit worried about the ladies behind glasses. the camera, but no. I'm here to please. Yeah. I'm here to please. I'm here all week. Oh my gosh, how exciting. Thank you so much. So listen, tell us a little bit about this wonderful Magnum. So here we have uh, Moet Grand Vintage 2006 Rosé. Uh, personally, this is one of my favorites. Should I, hold um, that I love Rosé Vintage Champagne. I love how, how, uh, how rich it can be. I love the red fruit characteristics, but I particularly love it in Magnum. And we have an expression in Champagne, which says Magnum show you care. 
And I love that because it's all about sharing. So it's all about sharing it with the people that you've just met, the friends that are yet to come. Um, and there's something really special about it and well, unique. So I we're mean, here to celebrate. If you do bring a magnum, then you are one of the special people that we've just met. <laughs> you so. could be our friend. Yeah. Cheers on that note. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Ethan. Cheers. Cheers. Day two, Louise. Oh, it was oh good. wasn't it, it good? It was a juicy one. I don't know how we're going to top that. Oh, well, listen, I mean, the nice thing is that this constant interactive part of the show, I'm really, really enjoying. Yes. So I think even tomorrow, we're possibly going to look at either a little bit of mixology kind of oh, cocktail what? making. Is, is this is our next challenge. Yes. Yes, so we've got a challenge every day, guys, and we want you to vote on which one you want us to perform, yeah. compete on. Yeah, so, so there, there's, a, there's a Slingsby Gin mixology moment, mm -hmm. or we're going down to the village enclosure for a sort of sustainability style challenge. I don't know what one would. What would you go for? I mean, I know I'm. You make a fierce I'm cocktail. I'm here for the fashion, but guys, I do. I do make a very do, strong cocktail. Do you? Yes. Oh, my kind of girl. Yeah, a bit of a topper on top, just like this. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so quickly, highlight of today. Ah, uh, the picnic. It was really wonderful. I mean, Car Park One is its own kind of entity. Oh like, yes. Who, who knew? Oh yes. How about you? Uh, I have to say, Oli Debu. I mean, that food was incredible. And yeah, the pistachio and the chocolate and everything just very Delicious. spoiling. Delicious. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. See you tomorrow.